Hi everyone, my name's James, I work for RSP Up in Scotland and this week I'll be answering your questions about bees. Now before I get on to the uh, questions, there's going to be three types of bees that I'm going to be talking about today. There's the bumblebees. Uh, they're the big fuzzy ones that I'm sure you're all familiar with at this time of year. There's the honeybees, they give us honey and uh, they live in, uh, in, in big hives. And then there's the solitary bees and they're the most numerous type of bees that we have in the UK but the ones that people are probably least familiar with. Uh, they generally live on their own uh, in burrows in the ground or they'll live in uh, some of the bee hotels that you might have up um, around your garden and they'll also live in little cavities. So we'll be talking about all three of them when I answer your questions. That's a really good question. Um, just like if you were starting to learn to ID any type of species, the best thing to buy is a really good field guide. Uh, and there's loads of really good field guides out there now for bumblebees and for solitary bees and, and, and all bees in, in general. So what I'd recommend is, is buying yourself one of them and familiarising yourself with those three different groups that I was talking about, the honeybees, the bumblebees uh, and the solitary bees. They come in a huge variety of uh, sizes, shapes and colours, but there's also some fantastic resources online where you can take pictures and, and put them on um, groups such as on Facebook or Twitter and people will help you with the identification but rule number one is definitely get yourself a field guide and uh, learn to um, familiarise yourself with those three different types of bees that I said at the beginning. So if you're talking about a hive then you're talking about honeybees because honeybees live in hives and other bees live in nests and honeybees are what we call um, social bees which basically means that there's a queen and then there's workers. So within a hive uh, a worker bee when it first emerges it might do duties within the hive so it might be doing things like um, feeding the young bees, cleaning the comb, um, accepting pollen and nectar off workers that uh, are coming in from outside and then as it get, gets older it might move on to jobs such as guarding the hive and then finally when it's coming to the end of its life it'll be doing the really risky jobs like going out into uh, the big wide world and collecting things like pollen and nectar. So yeah, variety of different jobs depending on the age generally. <laughs> So a bee's lifespan is really dictated uh, by a couple of things. One is species, so a honeybee queen might live up to six years, whereas a worker honeybee during the middle of the season in summer might only live for about four weeks. But um, it's also dictated on the weather. So if it's really sunny and the bees can get out and do a lot of uh, foraging, even uh, things like bumblebees will have shorter lifespans than if it's cold and damp and they can't really get out and do as much foraging. So it's not the age, it's the mileage. <laughs> So it's a really mixed picture across Scotland and across different species, but the three things that are negatively affecting bee populations are habitat loss. Uh, we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadows in the UK over the last uh, 70 years. Um, climate change and also pesticide use. So for some species, um, things like climate change, they're um, reacting to that and they're seeing their ranges increase and move north. So species like tree bumblebee or hairy-footed flower bee. But habitat loss is a major uh, factor that is really affecting bee populations. So for species like great yellow bumblebee, which has declined massively uh, across the whole of the UK and Scotland, is, um, is now restricted to just the uh, inner and outer Hebrides and the north coast of Scotland and Orkney. So we've seen huge declines in some species, uh, while other species seem to be coping. So a really mixed pet picture but overall our invertebrate populations are definitely under threat. That's a great question and I think for anyone who owns a garden or a bit of outdoor space this is exactly the kind of thing we need to be asking because we need to be providing as much help as we can for the bees and the two things they need are a home and they need food and we can provide for both of them quite easily. 
From a food point of view, it's flowers. So what the bees need is pollen and nectar. And the best way of finding the best plants for the bees is by going to your local garden centre and watching to see what the wild bees are foraging on there because they'll tell you what's good for them. There's lots of flowers out there that when you're in the garden centres, they look really attractive to us. Things like bedding plants, unfortunately, but they just don't have any nectar and pollen anymore. They're designed for us. They're not designed for bees. They're designed to look showy and the bees just don't use them. So have a look in your local garden centre. Look where the bees are foraging and pick those plants. There's also some great resources online that will tell you the best plants uh, for bees. When it comes to homes, if you can provide a bit of bare ground, that's great, that'll do for the solitary bees. Uh, leave bits of your garden a little bit untidy. Bumblebees love nesting in old compost heaps, so things like that. And get yourself a bee hotel, particularly one that you can clean out at the end of the season. Loads of solitary bees will, uh, will move into them as well. Two really easy things that you can do for bees in your garden.